Good afternoon, friends. I'm Natalie, and welcome to Prince George's County Memorial Library System. And welcome to today's Reader's Advisory, Seniors Take the Lead, Stories with Senior Citizen Protagonists. May is Older Americans Month, and today we are going to explore a variety of books, audiobooks, and movies that place senior citizens front and center. Finding Love and Finding Adventures, Seeing the World and Changing the World, Solving Crimes and Committing Them. Older characters are sometimes relegated to supporting roles. All of the materials presented today place them firmly in the spotlight. These are multifaceted characters with depth and personal agency. We will be dividing the material presented today into different sections for easy reference. Books and materials highlighting older characters appear across a variety of genres, but today our selections lean towards historical fiction, mystery, and general drama. But you can contact the library for recommendations in other areas as well. We will start out with our mystery selections. Mystery The Cat Who Series the Thursday Murder Club, the Sister Jane Arnold series, the Blanche White mysteries, the Miss Marple mysteries. The Cat Who series by Lillian Jackson Braun. This series contains 29 volumes of cozy mysteries featuring a semi-retired protagonist and a focus on characters and communities. In each mystery, his pets are involved in the investigation. Braun wrote the first few books about a younger James Quillerin, a newspaper reporter solving crimes in the city. But by the fourth book, he is older, semi-retired, and solving crimes in Moose County, 400 miles north of everywhere. The exact location is never specified, but it is generally assumed to be based on Bad Axe, Michigan, where Braun herself lived for some time. The mysteries have a strong sense of place, both in Moose County, which is full of vividly colorful characters, whose relationships build on each other throughout the series, and also when Quillerin goes on vacation to relax, only to stumble across more crimes when he gets there. In this volume, The Cat Who Moved a Mountain, he takes his two cats, Coco and Yum Yum, to the Potato Mountains to do some deep thinking about some weighty topics, only to be distracted by a murder that occurred there the year before. He becomes convinced that the wrong man was convicted and begins investigations, putting himself in danger and digging up dirt that the locals had considered long settled. The cat in the title here, and in fact, every title, is the aforementioned Coco. Coco and Yum Yum are named after characters in a Gilbert and Sullivan operetta and frequently lead Quiller into clues that he needs to solve a case. It is an ongoing question whether they are just spurring on his own thought processes or whether Coco somehow understands more about a given situation than a cat really ought to. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This is his debut novel featuring four septuagenarian protagonists and The Guardian reports that it was the fastest selling adult crime debut since record began. It has a sequel coming out later this year. If you are a fan of British panel shows like I am, you may already know Richard Osman. This is the television personality's first novel, though he has half a dozen non-fiction titles to his name already. The Thursday Murder Club is the story of four pensioners living in a British retirement community who have made a habit of working together to try to solve old cold cases from the past of another of the community's residents. Now, though, they've got a hot one as the man in charge of the retirement community is murdered just before he was set to be replaced. Elizabeth, Joyce, Abraham, and Ron use connections from their former careers and a handy friendship with a constable to make sure that this case gets solved. Kirkus describes it as a top-class cozy infused with dry wit and charming characters. It has a sequel set to come out later in 2021, and the movie rights have already been purchased by Steven Spielberg's production company. 
the Sister Jane Arnold series by Rita Mae Brown. This series features a 70-something Master of the Hunt as protagonist, with 12 volumes in the series. It has rich characters and settings, and if you enjoy this author, she has two other series as well. Like her Sneaky Pie Brown novels, her Sister Jane Arnold books are set in Virginia, in a community where Southern charm is only a thin layer on top of rivalry, intrigue, and crime. This series centers around Jane Arnold, master of the Jefferson Hunt Club. She's nearing 70 in the first novel and continues to age throughout the series. Her business with the Hunt Club and her acquaintances in the area both create opportunities for her to come across crimes, both large and small. She brings her doggedness to the hunt for justice, as well as her more traditional hunts. Rita Mae Brown is able to bring the setting to life using her own history of fox hunting and her knowledge of the area, having lived in Charlottesville since the late 70s. The Blanche White Mysteries by Barbara Neely this is a four novel series whose author was named Mystery Writers of America's 2020 Grand Master. Neely also received an Agatha Award for Blanche on the Lamb, the first book in the series. Essence Magazine reports that it was the first mystery by a black woman with a black woman as the heroine. Barbara Neely wrote four novels starring Blanche White, a maid and a cook, who takes advantage of the way society tends to ignore and overlook people in service professions, and especially women of color working in service, in order to solve mysteries. In Blanche and the Lamb, we find her trying to hide in plain sight after sneaking out of a courthouse over a minor offense, but becoming entangled in a murder investigation. Kirkus Reviews called Blanche and the Lamb a quirky mystery debut that pits Blanche against a Faulknerian cast of oddballs who may be trying to kill each other off to claim a Southern fortune. Barbara Neely told Ms. Magazine that she realized the mystery genre was the perfect place to talk about serious subjects. The Miss Marple series by Agatha Christie. Jane Marple is the star of 12 novels and 20 short stories some of which have been made into a TV series. Christie was the first recipient of the Grandmaster Award from the Mystery Writers of America. Miss Marple seems to strangers, and even to acquaintances sometimes, a rather provincial woman who couldn't possibly have something interesting to say, and who would be rather shocked at the very idea of crime. They are usually shocked then, as she is able to cut to the heart of any given mystery and find the central dynamic that will explain the whole thing. She has been a student of human nature her whole life, and will be able to share an anecdote from St. Mary Mead that will make the scales fall away from one's eyes. Agatha Christie also wrote the Hercule Poirot series and was made a Dame of the British Empire for her contributions to literature. An elderly lady is up to no good. Still life with breadcrumbs. A man called Uva. The Joy Luck Club. The little old lady who broke all the rules. An elderly lady is up to no good. By Helen Turston. This is a collection of five short stories translated from the Swedish about an octogenarian protagonist who is definitely an antihero. This is a standalone book in her Detective Inspector Huss series. Maud is a woman who is determined to have a comfortable and peaceful life. She is also a woman who is willing to commit murder to make sure that comes to pass. In these stories, she takes revenge on a variety of people who are trying or have tried to take advantage of her. From the antiques appraiser who covers her heirlooms, to the beau who spurned her after a personal tragedy. Maud is evening the score and is clever enough to get away with it. Detective Inspector Irene Huss, the protagonist of Turston's longer series, makes minor appearances, but this volume is entirely in celebration of Maud, and you don't have to have read any of her other books to enjoy it. The book is short enough to be read in an afternoon, and good enough that you may want to just start over at the beginning when you finish. It was an ABA Indie Next selection for November 2018, and a Lone Star's top 10 pick for November 2018 as well. 
Still Life with Breadcrumbs by Anna Quindlin. This is the story of a 60-year-old photographer falling on hard times and looking for inspiration, but finding romance and personal reinvention as well. Quindlin is not only a novelist, but also a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist. Rebecca Winter is looking to figure out where to go from here. She is a photographer who has just received a Professional Lifetime Achievement Award at 60, and, well, that feels awfully like being told it's time to retire. She leaves the city to spend a year in the country and contemplate, but what she finds there is significantly more than she expected. Interesting people, a new romance, and a new spring of artistic creativity ensue. This story is about having faith in your own worth and not giving up on yourself or your own personal growth. NPR calls it a tidally constructed, resolutely uplifting romance and the literary equivalent of comfort food. A hot cup of tea of a story is how it is described by USA Today. A Man Called Uva by Frederick Backman. This was a debut novel that started as a series of blog posts, and the novel has been made into both a movie and a stage play. It's been translated from the original Swedish. Uva is struggling after his forced retirement and the death of his wife. He is closed off from his community and only really seems to enjoy telling people when they are breaking local ordinances and visiting the grave of his wife. He has decided to commit suicide. Until, that is, his Iranian neighbors move in and back over his mailbox with their moving van. This interaction begins an intertwining of the two households that has surprising ramifications for everyone involved. The novel moves between current day and the reminiscences about Uva's past that help explain how he has found himself in his current state. The novel started out as a blog by Backman, who wrote a series of posts about his own personal pet peeves that were titled, I am a man called Uva. The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. This book is a series of interconnected vignettes that has been made into a movie. The book itself is organized like a Mahjong game and was a finalist for the National Book Awards when it came out in 1989. The Joy Luck Club is the story of four Chinese immigrant mothers and their Chinese-American daughters. One of the mothers has passed away before the book opens. Three mothers gather to play Mahjong at the Chinese First Baptist Church in San Francisco. The stories shared in the novel are presented as reminiscences on the parts of the players as they play, spanning two continents and several decades. They play and they snack, and they unfold complicated personal narratives full of struggle and ingenuity. A Los Angeles Times review of the book said, The only negative thing I could ever say about this book is that I'll never be able to read it again for the first time. The Little Old Lady Who Broke All the Rules by Katharina Engelman Sundberg this book is the first in a series about a group of senior citizen protagonists living in a retirement home and has been a number one international bestseller. 79-year-old Martha Anderson and her friends live in a retirement home that has been cutting corners to save money. Martha Anderson and her friends are not going to take that line down. But what can five pensioners do to increase their standard of living? Well, obviously, They'll turn to crime, and not just any crime, but a high-profile art theft from the National Museum. Their group, called the League of Pensioners, star in three novels about their criminal antics. Library Love Fest says, The best exotic Marigold Hotel meets the Italian job, in internationally best-selling author Katharina Inkelman Sundberg's witty and insightful comedy of errors. Historical News of the World Deacon King Kong The Old Man and the Sea Two Old Women An Alaskan Legend of Betrayal, Courage, and Survival The Remains of the Day News of the World by Paulette Giles This novel is set in the late 1800s and was a National Book Awards finalist. 
it was made into a movie with tom hanks who stars as the 71 year old veteran protagonist captain jefferson kyle kidd has been tasked with delivering 10 year old joanna to her remaining relatives in 1870 her parents were murdered and she has been held captive for some years so the captain struggles with her emotional problems on the journey as well as outside threats to their safety and well-being additionally jefferson has been making his living lately as a newsreader charging per head to read newspapers to people who cannot read them on their own this is not a lucrative profession so they also struggle with simply gathering the funds to continue on their way captain jefferson kyle kidd has previously made an appearance in giles earlier novel the color of lightning though he is not the protagonist in that novel kirkus calls the novel lyrical and affecting deacon king kong by james mcbride this novel is an oprah book club selection as well as one of barack obama's favorite books of the year James McBride is also the author of The Color of Water. This story is set in 1969. Sportcoat is a deacon at Five Ends Baptist Church. Sportcoat also shoots a drug dealer in broad daylight, a drug dealer who used to be on Sportcoat's youth baseball team. He does it in front of more than a dozen witnesses and only succeeds in clipping his ear. He also immediately forgets that he's even done it. With this act, the whole neighborhood is upended, and both the reader and the community at large are left to unravel what happened and why. To do so, we must follow a variety of threads and hear from a variety of characters, including a section narrated by a colony of ants. The New York Times calls it a darkly funny tale. The Los Angeles Times says, shouldn't we just get it over with and declare McBride this decade's great American novelist? McBride just has a way of inflating reality to comical sizes, the better for us to see every tiny mechanism that holds unjust systems in place. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway This is a classic work from 1952 and Hemingway's last major work that he published in his life. It came out simultaneously as a novel and in Life magazine. The Old Man and the Sea is the story of an elderly Cuban fisherman who has been struck with a life-changing bad luck. It has been 84 days since he has caught a fish, and people are avoiding him in case the bad luck is contagious. His own apprentice has been forbidden from sailing with him. He takes one last major fishing journey to prove to himself that he is still able to triumph. His journey to catch a fish to be proud of and then to protect his catch on the way back is an emotional one and filled with danger. At one point, he needs to create a makeshift harpoon to fight off sharks. This book has been adapted for the screen on three different occasions. The Guardian says, A beautiful tale, a wash in the sea salt and sweat, bait and beer of the Havana coast. It tells a fundamental human truth. In a volatile world, from our first breath to our last wish, through triumphs and pitfalls both trivial and profound, what sustains us, ultimately, is hope. Two Old Women, an Alaskan Legend of Betrayal, Courage, and Survival by Velma Wallace This story is based on a legend of the Athabascan Indians. Its protagonists are two elderly women, and it is the tale of survival in an Alaskan winter. Two Old Women is the story of a terrible, terrible winter in Alaska, and the decision made by a leader to leave some of his most vulnerable behind. The two women are elderly, and they are left as dead weight when the tribe moves on, forced to fend for themselves with few resources against an unusually harsh winter. They rely on themselves and on each other, and find out whether they can thrive. Their tribe, likewise, discovers whether they can survive without them. Tony Hillerman said, No one should miss this beautiful legend. Ursula K. Le Guin said, This story speaks straight to the heart with clarity, sweetness, and wisdom. 
The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro Ishiguro is a winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, and this novel was made into a movie starring Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson. It is set shortly after World War II. In the 1950s, Stevens the butler is approaching the evening of his life. He begins to contemplate and wonder about some of the events in his life in the 20s and 30s. This story involves missed chances and taken chances, and valuing the present over the past. It also uses first-person narration to create a deeply personal feeling. The setting of a stately old home will appeal to fans of Downton Abbey and Bridgerton, and Stephen's realizations regarding the political activity of his longtime employer make the novel compelling for those interested in World War II as well. The New York Review of Books called it a virtuoso performance, put on with dazzling daring and aplomb. The New York Times says, an intricate and dazzling novel. Romance Seasoned our Souls at Night Major Pettigrew's Last Stand Seasoned by Delaney Diamond This book features three different couples, all with seasoned women protagonists. If you enjoy these stories, Delaney Diamond has dozens of other books in our collection. Renee, Adelaide, and Jackie are each approaching love from different angles. Renee has already been married and divorced three times. Adelaide has recently gotten divorced from her husband, but now finds herself wondering if they can have a second try together. And Jackie has always put her career first, only to wonder what the road less traveled is like when an old flame comes back into her life. All three are going to need to make some hard choices, or maybe some of them might just be very easy choices indeed. Our Souls at Night by Kent Haruf. This is the story of a widow and a widower in Colorado falling in love. It was recently made into a movie for Netflix. Haruf's last novel before he passed away. Addie and Louie lost their spouses years ago, and their grown children live some distance away, making their nights lonely. Addie suggests that they spend some nice platonic time together for some companionship sleeping in the same bed. That is not quite how the story unfolds. The New Yorker calls it a delicate, sneakily devastating evocation of place and character. Haruf's story accumulates resonance through carefully chosen details. The novel is quiet, but never complacent. The Seattle Times says, blunt, textured, and dryly humorous, this quietly elegiac novel caps a fine, late-blooming, and tenacious writing career. This is a novel for just after sunset on a summer's eve, when the sky is still light and there is still much to see if you're looking. Major Pettigrew's Last Stand by Helen Simonson This novel stars a 68-year-old retired British Army officer falling in love with a Pakistani shopkeeper from the village. The prose is reminiscent in style to that of P.G. Woodhouse. Major Pettigrew is an exceptionally typical British retiree in a small village, until his brother dies and he finds himself doing something rather untypical. He finds himself in a quickly developing friendship with Jasmina Ali, a widowed shopkeeper, and it isn't long before he also finds himself falling in love with Jasmina. Kathleen Shrine, author of The Love Letter, says, With courting curmudgeons, wayward sons, religion, race, and real estate in a petty and picturesque English village, Major Pettigrew's Last Stand is surprisingly, wonderfully romantic and fresh, the best first novel I've read in a long, long time. The New York Times says, Funny, barbed, delightfully winsome storytelling. As with the polished work of Alexander McCall Smith, there is never a dull moment. It is all about intelligence, heart, dignity, and backbone. Major Pettigrew's Last Stand has them all. Movies Hello, my name is Doris.
the best exotic marigold hotel and the second best exotic marigold hotel. The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman Amour Cloudburst Hello, my name is Doris. Sally Field was nominated for Best Actress and the Film for Best Comedy in the AARP Annual Movies for Grown-Ups Awards. It stars a 60-something protagonist with a much younger love interest and won the Audience Award at the South by Southwest Film Festival, where it was premiered. Doris is a data entry worker who's really just been going through a lot lately. Her mother, with whom she has lived her whole life, has recently passed and her family is trying to get her to sell the house. She only really has one close friend, and she's struggling with hoarding. But also, she just got a new co-worker, and he is incredibly dreamy. Also, 30 years younger than she is, but with her self-help tapes, she's going to give it a shot. Unfortunately, she's not in the best headspace right now and makes what some might call some slightly sketchy decisions. But all's fair in love and war, right? right? Way Too Indie says, it balances classy screwball comedy, bone-deep drama, and old-fashioned romance with the finesse of an Olympic gymnast. Pablo Scholes from Claren says, this film has one of the best endings you can imagine. The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel and The Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. These movies feature a star-studded cast of largely older actors. The protagonists are a variety of retired British expats. A group of British retirees go to Jaipur to live in the best exotic Marigold Hotel, a retirement home. Each of them have their own stories to explore once they get there, though they do overlap each other. In the sequel, made three years later, efforts are made to expand to a second location in India and largely the same group of characters have new adventures. Peter de Bruges of Variety wrote, It's not so common to find an ensemble of this caliber so enthusiastic to work together, and that chemistry comes across. The Autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman This movie was originally a novel published in 1971 by Ernest J. Gaines. It stars Cicely Tyson as the 110-year-old protagonist and has been heavily awarded. The autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman is a story of Miss Pittman's reminiscences to a journalist about her life from the 1850s to the 1960s, from before the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement. It is done in the style of oral histories. The movie won nine primetime Emmys. These include, but are not limited to, Outstanding Special, Best Lead Actress in a Drama, Actress of the Year, Best Writing in a Drama, Best Directing in a Drama, I'm not going to list all of them. Jay Sharbet for the Associated Press says, Profoundly moving is a tattered cliche those in the TV review racket use when a serious show doesn't put them to sleep in 10 minutes. It is the only description that seems to fit this production. Amour. This is a French romantic drama, a collaboration between German, Austrian, and French production companies. It's won dozens of awards, including the Palme d'Or at Cannes. Amour is a movie about the lengths we will go to for the people we love. It is also about the last days of a Parisian couple, Georges and Anne, after Anne has a stroke. It isn't a spoiler to say that Anne dies. She is discovered at the very beginning of the movie. The question is, how it happened? A masterpiece about life, death, and everything in between, says the New York Times. And Time Out London reported, Amour is devastatingly original and unflinching in the way it examines the effect of love on death, and vice versa. Roger Ebert said, Amour is a fascinating, mesmerizing, and heartbreaking movie. Cloudburst. This movie also won dozens of awards from film festivals. It is, however, a road trip comedy. A lesbian couple fly the coop at a nursing home and drive to Canada to get married. 
Olympia Dukakis and Brenda Fricker decide to run away to Canada to get married after one of them is put in a nursing home by her family. If they're married, they'll be able to make decisions like these for and with each other. The movie is set in that period where gay marriage was legal in Canada, but not in the United States. The women pick up a young hitchhiker as they go, and the three of them experience personal changes along the way. The relationships are the focus here, rather than specifically the plot, and this movie is significantly bodier than any of the others on the list. The Globe and Mail says, It's a delight to see Olympia Dukakis and Brenda Fricker, superb talents and Oscar winners both, share almost every frame of Cloudburst. One of the movies featured today, Cloudburst, is only available through Canopy so I'd like to take a moment to show you how that works. Canopy is a streaming service for video with more than 26,000 movies and documentaries. To access it, we will start by going first to our website, pgcmls.info, standing for Prince George's County Memorial Library System. On the home page, we will select Online Library, and then select Online Resources where it appears in bold on the drop-down menu. There are dozens and dozens of online resources provided by the library, but they are presented here in alphabetical order, so we're just going to scroll down to K for Canopy. The link here will take us to their website's page that is specifically for Prince George's County Library. To use Canopy, they will ask you to create an account and will request your library card, personal identification number, name, and email. Unless you've gone out of your way to change it, your PIN will be the last four numbers of your phone number. If you're having trouble creating an account, you can just call the library and we will walk you through the process, resetting your PIN if necessary. On the login page, you will click Add Library to begin signing up. Once you've entered this information, click on Sign Up and then watch now. The last step is to verify your email address. This is a one-time step where you check the email account that you've just provided to find an email from Canopy. When you open it up, you'll click the orange Verify Email button. On Canopy's website, you can just use the search bar to look for the title you need, or you can browse the presented movies and documentaries organized by genres and themes. Some of the materials presented here today are available as ebooks or e audiobooks through Overdrive. Since the way that people access Overdrive can change depending on whether they're using a PC or laptop, or their phone, or a tablet, or a Kindle reader, the easiest way to find out how to access those is to go to our website, again, pgcmls.info and go to that online resources page, scroll down to Overdrive, helpfully placed under O, and look at the variety of tutorial videos that are available, created with device-specific instructions in mind. If you're having difficulty accessing an item or creating your account on OverDrive, again, you can call the library and one of us would be happy to walk you through the process. One of the resources that we discussed today, the Miss Marple television series, is available through Hoopla, so let me show you how that goes. We're going to start out at our website, pgcmls.info. We're going to select Online Library, and then the bolded Online Resources in the left column. We're going to scroll down to Hoopla. You can see that there are tutorial videos underneath, but let's open it up and take a look. On their main screen, you can click on Get Started Today, this blue button in the center top. 
they're going to ask you to enter your email and to create a password in order to create a login. You'll need to agree to their terms and conditions. Once you've done so, you'll be able to take a look at our holdings. You can type what you're looking for in the search bar. And you'll be able to see the different seasons of the Miss Marvel television show. Hoopla does ask that you borrow each episode individually. You can also choose to simply browse. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I'd like to remind you that this is just a sampling and that there are many other options available to you. Feel free to contact a librarian and see what else is out there just waiting to be discovered. We can't wait to see you again at another Reader's Advisory. Bye!